Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Bass Habits. Today we're going to talk about the bass player of one of the greatest and most influential rock bands of all time, John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin. Before teaming up with Jimmy Page in 1968 to form Led Zeppelin, John Paul Jones was already an arranger, composer and session player who had worked with many prominent artists of the 1960s. Jones had been exposed to a variety of musical styles at a very young age, and this vast musical experience provided a fantastic resource to draw from, as a player and as a composer. In fact, it was the mixture of many influences brought in by each member of Led Zeppelin which enabled the group to be so prolific, innovative and unique. After the end of Led Zeppelin, Jones worked as an arranger and composer, but also began producing records and writing film scores, once again demonstrating a great versatility. John Paul Jones is widely considered to be a highly influential and important bass player in the history of rock music. Many notable rock bassists have been influenced by Jones, including John Deacon of Queen, Tom Hamilton of Aerosmith, Geddy Lee of Rush and Gene Simmons of Kiss. So let's have a look at some of John Paul Jones' main features. Number one, power chord arpeggios. Voicing a power chord is a very easy and common trick among bands of the 60s and 70s, especially the ones with no rhythm guitar, like Led Zeppelin. It provides immediately an extra texture to the rhythm part, without adding too many new elements to the harmony. Number two, use licks that underline the quality of the chord. Now, this is what I find to be the most interesting feature of Led Zeppelin's bass parts. Jones makes a large use of fills that are in fact almost complete scales. Underlining the third or the fifth of a chord is pretty common in rock music, but Jones often inserts also other notes belonging to the chord. The verse of what is and what should never be revolves around two chords, A13 and E7. Under the A13 chord, the bass hits root, major 3rd, 5th, 6th and 8th, so it's practically voicing an A major pentatonic scale. On the verse of Good Times, Bad Times, Jones hits root, 5th, 8th, 7th, major 3rd, 2nd, under a D chord, leaving out only two notes of the D major scale. On Celebration Day, the bass underlines the major third of the C chord before hitting the root, fifth, sixth and eighth on the G7 chord. Some of these licks are 16 notes runs and they are really challenging to play. My favorite is the chorus of Immigrant Song. The bass voices a complete A major scale, followed by a B mixolydian and then a C mixolydian scale. So Jones is actually changing three different keys within four bars of music. Not bad, huh? Number three, root note on the kick, high octave on the snare. Another distinct trait of John Paul Jones' style is the way he uses octave jumps to reinforce John Bonham's playing. When this happens, the root note on the low string acts as the kick, while the higher octave of the root acts as the snare. The best example is again Immigrant Song, check it out. Number 4, use chromatic walks. 
Jones is a big fan of chromatic scales, which he uses in very clever ways. If you think about it, one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic bass line of Led Zeppelin is nothing but a four notes chromatic walk repeated on a different string. Number 5. Play behind the beat. Black Dog is the main example of John and Jimmy Page playing behind Bonham's beat, but a general rule to get a groovy Led Zeppelin tone is to play slightly behind the beat, especially on heavy songs with a slow tempo, like Black Dog or Hollow to Love. Yeah, I do. In fact, we used to have contests and just how far you can lay back and still keep it groovy. It's quite fun. Number 6. Fingerstyle or Pick. The answer is both. If I had to describe John Paul Jones with only one word, I would choose versatile. John is mainly a fingerstyle player, but as any good bass player should do, he uses a pick when it's necessary. And when he does, he gets a really distorted, nasty tone. Number 7. Pluck or pick close to the neck. Both when plucking and picking, John prefers to hit the string very close to the neck, and that's part of the reason behind his trademark woody tone. Number 8. Roll off your tone, scoop your midrange and add some compression. John Paul Jones' tone was all about the low frequency. There's little to no midrange or trebles, and some say that in the early Zeppelin recording he even used the foam mute under the strings. So the idea is to have a really woody warm tone and pretty much no percussive sound. In Led Zeppelin, the midrange is occupied by Jimmy Page's guitar and John Bonham's snare drum, while the high-pitched voice of Robert Plant takes care of the higher frequencies. So a good low end was essential for Jones in order to stand out, and in fact, in most of the production of Led Zeppelin, the bass is perfectly distinguishable. So like any bass player should do, John modeled his tone according to what fit the band most and his extreme versatility made him one of the most influential bass players in rock music. John Paul Jones' knowledge of harmony is really advanced and this video only covers the basics, so you should really go on and do your own research. A few years ago, Jones released a very interesting video interview on Guitar.com, where he talks about his musician background and about the role of the bass player in the band. I've put the link in the description below, so make sure you go check it out. Please give us a like, leave us a comment, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram.